morning and praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us continue to rejoice and be glad in it. I know like myself, I'm sure you are thanking God that he has allowed us to see a day that we have not seen before. He has allowed us to see this day and I'm some kind of glad about it. Welcome to Evening Light Christian Outreach Ministry, where our pastor is District Elder Alton F. Pettis. Our order of services are as follows. We are here and we're here at the sanctuary. Praise God. Ten of Meetings, 222 Crane Highway, Upper Marlboro, Maryland today. We're some kind of glad to be able to to fellowship together. Amen. Our service is here at 10 a.m. YouTube and Facebook Live, 10 a.m. each Sunday. On Tuesdays at 7 p.m., we have our Level Up Bible Study, which is <clears throat> at 7 p.m., and that is via Zoom, so if you like the meeting ID um, information, please contact us and I'll provide that information momentarily. On Wednesdays, it's intercessory prayer, and we ask that you um, join us in prayer wherever you are. And don't wait till Wednesday. Join us before then. Our list continues to grow. We're asking for prayers, and I'm just going to name a few people. Sandra, Janice Jones, Danielle Autumn and Dana, Joshua Hamilton, the family of Naya, Frazier, Jeffrey, and Amari. So those are just a few of the names that's on the list. We keep um, on the list from Bob and Sister Williams and many others that need our continuous prayers like um, Mother Crystal Hemming as well. So be in prayer. If you don't call us for our complete list, jot down the names that I just mentioned as many as you can remember. Call their names out even That's starting right. today in the name of Jesus. Thursday is our level of teaching at 8 a.m lecture via YouTube at Evening Light COC and Facebook Live at Evening Light Church. Our announcements are as follows. March is Women's History Month and today the spotlight is Phyllis Wheatley. More for that will be um, upcoming. March, mark your calendars. April 9th at 9 a.m., Pastor Pettis will be a, one of the speakers at the Preparing for the Unprecedented Service hosted by Prophetess Vera Morland. And that service is going to be at Grace International Deliverance Church, 10739 Tucker Street in Beltsville, Maryland. There is a $35 registration fee. You can go on Facebook and search for Vera Moreland to get a copy of the flyer regarding that service, how you may um, register via mail or cash app. And if you have any questions, I believe her telephone number is there where you can give her a call. And again, that's April 9th. April 15th, which is Good Friday, from 12 to 2 p.m., Mother Loretta Howard is hosting a seven last words service at Evening Light that's here at 222 Crane Highway. Our own Sister Sally Mitchell will be one of the speakers. We're excited about that. April 16th, from 10 to 12, get ready for a fun-filled morning where Evening Light is hosting its Easter egg hunt here on the property. 
And April 16th, again, is the Easter egg hunt here at the property. And we know that on the 17th is Resurrection Sunday. Tell someone to meet us at the light where our mission is to teach, train, equip, and empower the body of Christ to live the abundant, victorious life as we await the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Our contact information is as follows. You may email us at the evening light dot light at AOL dot com. Our telephone number is 301-390-7099. If you would like to make a donation in the support of this ministry, you may do so by going to our website, which is www.eatonlightchurch.org. You can do so also via Givelify.com, Evening Light Church of Christ, PayPal, Evening Light Church, Cash App, Dollar Sign, E L C O M 12. That's Dollar Sign, E L C O M, and the number 12. And of course, you can mail a donation to Evening Light or Elcom, E L C O M. Post Office Box 4854, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20775. We thank you for your continued love, prayer, and support of this ministry. If you would, bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we praise you and we thank you. We love you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We honor you. Yes, Lord. We give you all the praise yes, and the glory yes, that you are due. Bob, if you had a thousand tongues, it would not be enough to show how much we love you and we thank you for keeping us, for healing us. And Father, before we ask you for anything, if we have done anything that did not glorify you, we ask for your forgiveness. Father, we know that you are a forgiving God. And we thank you, Father, that you are a God of second chances, Lord. Third, fourth, fifth chances. We thank you that you are the main thing of forgiving God. That doesn't give us right to continue in whatever it is that we do that does not glorify you. But for the things that we do, do, Lord, we say thank you for forgiving us. And Father, there's so many on the list that needs healing. Someone who's diagnosed with cancer, someone else whose name I did not um, include or mention, Lady Michelle Sims. Father, she needs healing. Janice Jones needs healing. There's others, Father, in the name of Jesus. There's some that needs to be saved, Lord, deliverance, Lord. So we thank you, Father, thank you. for what you've done. We thank you, Father, thank for you. the procedure that Sister Williams went through last week. We thank, thank you, you, Father, for the procedure that Mother Hendon went through and that you watched over, you protected, you kept the Father. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise and the glory for your healing power for the things that you do. Father, we might not understand all it is that we're going through, but we know that you are a keeper. You are a protector. You are a savior. And so, Father, right now, I pray for those that are unchurched, unsaved, Father, that are vaccinated in the name of Jesus. Draw them closer to you, Father. Help us to be witnesses, Father, in the name of Jesus, so that we can help them to cry out, what must I do to be saved? That our lives be a light and a beacon, Father. That someone will see something special about us in the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you and we thank you. We thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. For your keeping power, watching over us on the highways, Father. The byways, as even as we walk, watching over us on our jobs, protecting us from COVID. There's so much that we can thank you for. But for whatever it is that you've done, Lord, we say thank you because we know it's all in your hands. We 
we give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Our scripture reading this morning will come from the 27th Psalm. Yes. And I'll be reading verses 1 through 4. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Mm. The Lord is my strength of my life. Yes. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemy and my foes, came upon me to eat my, up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host would, should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me, mm. and this will I be confident. This will I be One thing have I desired of yes. the Lord, yes. that, will, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord yes. all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of amen. the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Amen. 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 Praise God. I thank him and Tori for his word. May the Lord continue to add blessings to us from the hearing of his word. Do you feel like praising? Amen, amen. I know I do. I've got my shelf in and my stuff in all the way. Bring my break out. <laughs> you know, I won't be able to hold my mule, as Mr. Nasty used to say. <laughs> Praise God. Jesus, 
thank you for that. And now, Lord, I thank you for those that are giving up their substance, those that are returning their tithe back to you, Lord. That 10%, Lord, that, that you, you declare is yours. We give it back to you gladly, gladly give it back, God. For those that are giving up their offerings, Lord, and those that are giving to our local, our, hallelujah, our local and our foreign missions, God, I, I thank you so much, Lord. It's not much, but you can multiply it, Lord. You're, you're able to multiply that, that $50 a month. We, we've heard where in some cases, one dollar is making three meals and some cases five meals. And I just thank you, Lord, for the liberality of your people. Oh, my God, as we reach across the world. Oh, my God, hallelujah, to help someone. Now, bless, bless the offering, the hands that hold it, those that bring it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much in advance. Step right out and let's, let's do this here. Yes, praise God. Thank you, thank you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Yes, okay. Praise God. Praise God. And before I come, I understand uh, Sister Tori's going to come again this week and share with us from another Women of the Month. Amen. I bless you. Thank you. Our Women History Spotlight um, this Sunday is Phyllis Wheatley. At the age eight, Phyllis Wheatley was kidnapped from West Africa in 1761 and purchased by John Wheatley as a personal servant to his wife in Boston, Massachusetts. The Wheatleys taught Phyllis how to read. She wrote, she wrote her first published poem at the age 13. Phyllis mastered Latin and Greek, going on to write highly acclaimed poetry. She published her first poem in 1767. She was the first African American and one of the first women to publish a book of poetry in the colony in 1773. A strong supporter of America's fight for independence, Wheatley penned several poems in honor of the Continental Army Commander George Washington. Willie sent one of her set works, written in 1775 to the future president, eventually expiring in an invitation to visit him at his headquarters in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Willie accepted the offer and visited Washington in March of 1776. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, as we look at the women, I'm going to ask everyone in the sanctuary if you would stand with me, please. Please stand with me. Stand with me. It's been a while, and sometimes we get we get out of the habit of, of praising God in the sanctuary. But if you would, if you would, would you just raise your hands? I know some of us still have on our masks, but if you would, would you just raise your hands to the Lord? And let's just give the Lord thanks. Will somebody just shout out, thank you, Jesus. Oh, will you shout out, thank you, Jesus. Oh, will you shout out, thank you, Jesus. From your heart, from your heart, shout, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Will you shout, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My, my tablet, thank you. We're looking this morning, we're looking this morning uh, at St. John, St. John, the ninth chapter. Thank you so much. St. John, the ninth chapter, and beginning at verse 1. St. John, the ninth chapter, beginning at verse 1. And I'm going to read down to and including verse 11. St. John 1, St. John 9, excuse me. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, 
but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, and made clay of the spittle, and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way therefore, and washed, and came seen. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat at bed? Some said, This is he, and others says, It is like him. <laughs> but he said, But he said, But he said, I am he. I am he. Therefore they said unto him, how were thine eyes open? And he answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received my sight. I want to speak to you for the next several minutes under the subject, The Unexpected Answer. Unexpected answer. We live in a day now where oftentimes there's so much that's predictable. So, so much predictable, predictability. Uh, uh, you, you, you can ask the question, and people, before you get your question out, people can already predict your answer. They can predict your answer. Uh, sometimes even be, even before <laughs> so, sometimes even before the full question, you know, we, we, they allow us to get part A out, but we don't get part B out before they're already answering the question. And, and you want to say, but wait a minute, you didn't get the whole question. You didn't even get the whole question. And already you're giving the answer. Uh, the question is, is how many of us have asked questions, have asked questions that we thought we knew the answer to, but we found out that the answer that was given was different from the answer that was sought. I, I'm, I'm reminded of, of, of every once in a while you'll see where a young man asked a young lady for her hand in marriage. And everybody's standing around and they're clapping. They're so excited. And she says, no. Uh, uh, and then they all look shocked as if they knew what the answer was going to be. But out comes the unexpected answer. Have you ever just knew you were up for a promotion or a job? I mean, you, you, you knew it. You, you were almost packed. You almost got your little box. Ready, you know, you know, most of us only carry so much. Yes, we do a shot. We, we carry enough in our desk that will fit in one box so that if we have to go, I did it for years. I could fit everything in one box. At the end of the day, me and that box was gone, including my name tag. We were out of there. Huh? And, and so we, we know this promotion is coming. We're all ready for it. Only to find out that they promoted someone else. Unexpected answer, unexpected answer. Sometimes we, we, we're thinking, we, we know, sometimes we're thinking that we know even about the question we're going to ask. Have you ever, have you ever gone through this, this self, this self, and you say, I know I need to ask somebody this question, but I feel that I already know the answer. And, and so, so why should I even ask? Why should I even ask Pastor about this? And, and why should I even ask him about it? I know what he's going to say. Why should I even ask a parent? Can I go? I know they're going to say no. But 
every once in a while we get surprised by an unexpected answer. I, 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 as I was writing, I recall when when I was in fifth grade, uh, Andre, they, I, I don't know if they, if they still have, no, they don't, I'm sure, because they have, but I, I was wondering if they still had the safeties. We used to have the safeties. You had that wonderful, uh, some of you are old enough to remember, other don't have a clue, but you had that wonderful white belt, you know, and you had your silver badge, and you were some kind of proud, you, you had your, your position there, and, uh, and in my particular case, I was in fifth grade, and, and we were getting ready to get promoted, and we had already decided on who was going to be captain, who was going to be the lieutenant, isn't this crazy, and who was going to be the sergeant. We already decided that. We're getting ready to go on summer break, and we've already decided that Glenn Pellicott, don't ask me how I remember his name, Glenn Pellicott was going to be the captain, and the young man's name was Lewis, but I don't remember Lewis's last name. He was going to be first lieutenant, and yours truly was going to be the sergeant. We get back after the summer break. Glenn is the captain. Thank you. Lewis is the first lieutenant, and they named Kenneth to be the sergeant. <laughs> I just, I'm all summer, I just knew. I, I could see my little yellow badge. I could see it, huh? But sometimes you get unexpected answers. And was I disappointed? Of course I was disappointed. Of course. Of course I was disappointed. And, and, and as I was writing that down, I, I, it, it dawned on me. It, it, I, I, prejudice wasn't an issue at, at, at where I lived at. It, it, wasn't, it really wasn't. And so I didn't even look at the fact that all three of them were Caucasian. I, I, I just thought, you know, well, that, that's what happened for whatever reason. Uh, they ended up making me a, a safety but definitely not the lieutenant. But, but this is sometimes what happens when, when we are, when we're so set on something going our way. How many times have we, have we gone to car dealers and, and, and looked at houses and just knew we were going to qualify uh, 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 only to be told, no, your, your credit score isn't quite high enough. Only to be told your down payment isn't large enough. It's this unexpected answer that we get. I also looked and I thought about those of you that still watch more, more Marty, Moby, whatever thing, uh, Portage, you know, who has that wonderful show and, 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 and they do that polygraph test. Yeah, you know, like, I know you're watching. It's okay. It's okay. I know you're watching. Yes, yes, yes. And, 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 and the young man and the woman come out and, and yeah, there you go, there you go. Yeah, and, and, and they say, and the polygraph says, you lie. And she's sitting there saying, I told you so. And then they ask, did you go over their house? And you said, no, the polygraph said you did. And you lie. And she's just pointing the finger. And then they get to the last one. Are you that baby's father? And she's, she knows he is. And the polygraph says, you are not the baby's father. And then he jumps up. Oh, help me, God. I know some of y'all watching this. Y'all said, Pastor, I lost his mind. He jumps up and he says, I knew or I told you so. I told you so that I wasn't the father. She sits there now looking at him stunned because of that unexpected answer. An unexpected answer. How many of us have gone through that? How many of us have been accused wrongly only to find out that, that when the evidence is brought forth the answer is changed. I was going through the, the word of God and, and, as I, and as I was looking I saw over and over again where, where the unexpected answers came forth and and, and I just want to share some of this with you because I, uh, God, God has an answer for us. And, and what he's telling me to share with you tonight this morning, let's stop looking for the expected answer. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what God told me to tell you this morning. He says, stop looking for the expected answer. God has an unexpected answer for you. Remember, if you remember Elijah, and when it came to Nahum, 
Nahum was a leprous general and had leprosy. And he called for the man of God. The man of God came to him and his answer to his cure was to go dip seven times in the filthy Jordan River. And, and, and here we are. Here's the situation, Sister Sally. The man has got sores that could kill him. But rather than get healed, he wants to know, are there better pools? Are there better rivers that I could go to rather than having to dip in the Jordan? Sometimes we go to God and go, oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And the Lord tells us to do something that we're uncomfortable with. Oh, I hear you talking to me. Like, yes, something that we don't want to do. But God says, if you will dip in Jordan seven times, your leprosy will be healed. And somebody ought to thank God this morning that against your will, you still went ahead and did. Hallelujah. Do I have a witness in here of somebody that did what God told them to do? Hmm. Somebody that took the position, not my will, but thy will be done. Hmm. Thinking about Moses as he, he's getting ready to cross the Red Sea with the, the million or so children of Israel, not including the women and the children, getting ready to cross the Red Sea. And he's standing there before him. And he's asking God, okay, God, what do we do now? <laughs> How many of us have asked God, Lord, now what do we do? What do we do now? God answered unexpectedly, what's in your hand? See, 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 I'm going to take a little liberty here, but I'm sure Moses just thought God was going to speak something. <laughs> he, was going, he was going to transport all the children of Israel to the other side. He, he just knew something like that had to happen. But God asked Moses, and God is asking us this morning, what's in your hand? What's in your hand? What's, what is it that God has given us? That's the unexpected. told him, he said, stand still and see the salvation. Oh, this is what makes it so beautiful, Andre. When God gives us that unexpected answer, he tells you, now you just stand still and watch me. You, 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 done, you have done your part. Now watch me do my part. You, you have been obedient in what you were. Matter of fact, in some cases, you did it by faith. You, you, you really didn't know what you were doing. But because God told you to do it. Do I have a witness in here that God has told us to do some things? And, and, and the logic in our brain said, no, don't you dare do that. No, 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 no. That don't make that country folk a lick up. Yeah, that doesn't make a lick of sense, huh? huh? And, but, but we stand there and we say, but God said do it. Oh, uh, yes, sir. No, 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 no. God says, lay your hand on your own stomach. And you say, that doesn't make a lick of sense. But God said to it. Lay your hand on your head. And you put your hands on your head and you say, now that doesn't make a lick of sense. But God said to do it. Yes, sir. Get up and go around this house and anoint every doorpost. Anoint every candle, every closet. And you say, God, that doesn't make a lick of sense. But at your word, I'll do it. Because we did it. Here comes the answer. Here comes the healing. Here comes the way being made. Here comes the divine opening that God provides that we had no idea he was going to do. Reminded, reminded of, of, of in the New Testament, we see it over and over again where Jesus is, is confronted with questions. Confronted with questions. And, and, and more times than not, he doesn't give a yes or no answer. He teaches a lesson. More often than not, so sometimes, sometimes when, when we go to God, we're looking for that yes or no. And God says, okay, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to answer your, your, your prayer, Sister Sally. But I got to teach you this lesson that goes along with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah that, that's how we do kids. My, my wife, oh, she's famous for it. She likes to teach the lesson. That goes with the answer. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, you say, okay, God, okay, I got it, I got it. Now, now, now give me the answer. Now, God says, no, I got it. 
And so when I look at and we see, we see the, the, the young man that, that was there 38 years at, at, the, at, at the pool. 38 years he was there. And, and Jesus asked, asked him, wilt thou be made whole? And his answer was, I have been here 38 years in this condition. And somebody always, there's always somebody that gets to the pool ahead of you. This man didn't know that he was talking to Jesus. And Jesus gave him the unexpected answer. He said, take him your bed. <laughs> it didn't matter to Jesus that it was the Sabbath day. It doesn't matter to Jesus what time of day it is, what time of night it is. None of that matters to Jesus. What matters to Jesus, are we willing to accept the unexpected answer? Or are we going to still lay there on our bed and say, no, I can't get up. I, I, no, no, no. no, we're going to take that bed up and walk. This man here in this ninth chapter, oh, thank you, God. This man here in this ninth chapter, and when, when I first read it, in, in first reading, I, I didn't realize it was Jesus' disciples who came. It, it, I, I, at first I thought it must have been the scribes and the Pharisees who came. But no, it was his disciples, and here they come asking about who sinned. Now, now I hope you I hope you get this here because the Lord is letting us know sometimes those in the household of faith. Oh, do, oh I hope y'all hear this today. Sometimes those of us sitting right on the pew with us, they're asking the question: Who sinned? Who sinned? Who sinned? And Jesus said, No one sinned. No one sinned. But that God would be glorified. Tells him, he says, I gotta have to do the works of him that sent me. As long as I'm in the in the world, I am the light of the world. And I like it when he, he gets further down and he, he, he does this this spittle thing that, that it looks like he, you know, every once in a while he just a little <laughs> and some clay. Yeah, yeah. But this time, this time when he put see, because the in the other incident. He put it on the man's eyes and he began to see immediately. Uh-huh, uh-huh. See, see, sometimes we think because, because Sally got her blessing immediately. Oh, oh, God's going to give me my blessing, the manifestation of my blessing immediately. But that's not the case here. What Jesus did was he put the clay on the man's eyes and he told him to go and show yourself to the priest. And the Bible declares... That as, as he went, as he went, the man was able, he washed and he came see. Washed and he came see. And, and then here come the neighbors. There's always some neighbors, y'all. They, they want to know, who was that? That, that, look, that, that, that couldn't have been LaShonda. That, that, that could not have been LaShonda. We know that she hasn't seen all her life. And as she runs around here, she's running around the tent of meeting. Shouting and praising God for deliverance. We, we know that can't be her. She's had knee issues for, for months. And, and that can't be her riding that bicycle. That can't be her jogging across the Woodrow Wilson Bridge. That can't be her. That's got to be, a, 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 in my imagination, that's got to be her twin. But God says, I'm answering your prayer in an unexpected way. I'm answering it. In an unexpected way. So you just keep on riding. You just, hallelujah. You just keep on going. You're going to find the healing is there. The healing is there. Oh, God. They wanted to know who opened his eyes. Who opened his eyes? And here's what the man said. The man said, look, I, I don't know what y'all know. Matter, matter of fact, they went to his parents. They, they asked his parents. They said, look, they, who was that man that, that did that? Them? Who was that man? And, and next day they said, I don't know. And they went to the young man and asked him, who was it that opened your eyes? And the young man said, all I know is that his name, hallelujah, that his name was Jesus. Can I get somebody to shout Jesus? Can I get somebody to shout Jesus? That's all I know. All I know, church, all I know, all I know. All I know is that I was once blind, hallelujah. But now I see all I know. Oh, God, all I know is that God had to Prayer, God answered. And 
It was an unexpected answer. It was an unexpected. I, I, I just, uh, I expected to beg the rest of my life. Oh, because I've been begging so long. I expected to be down so long. Oh, yes. I, I, I expected that it wasn't going to get any better than this. I expected to be in this relationship. And I expected my children to be in jail the rest of their life. Oh, but God, but God. But can I get somebody to say, but God, but God, God. And he says, I've got an unexpected answer. Oh, God, and I thank you, Lord. For those that have testimonies, how God delivered their sons, God delivered their daughters out of prison. We got a testimony where they have been given life in prison. But but somebody say, but God, but God. Somebody say, but God, but God. God said, oh, that's not the answer I've got. That's the judge's answer. That's the judge's answer. We've got some that have been on drugs, and then and, and God and the devil, hallelujah. The doctor says, the psychologist says, and they got it in our mind, that's that's how your child's going to be the rest of your life. You might as well get ready. They're going to go on fentanyl, and, and one day they're going to call you and tell you that they're dead. Oh, but I serve a God, Sister Sally, that's telling me today there's an unexpected answer. He's the same. Somebody say, same God. Somebody say, same God. Somebody say, same God. He's the same God that cleaned up those hundreds and thousands and any place else in the world. Don't tell me he won't do it for you. Tell me he won't do it for you. And then the Lord told me, he says, look, no, let's all stand. I'm finished with this. I'm finished. I'm finished with this. Oh, God. Mm, yes, yes. Okay. I, I see here. That, that, that the Lord told me, he says, make sure I share with you that the enemy keeps trying to get us to think. Come on now. The enemy keeps trying to get us to think that we know the answers. That we know the answers. Yes, yes, that we know the answers. He keeps trying to get us to think that, that there may be no answer. Uh-huh. Just accept it as it is. Oh, but the Lord told me to tell you and to ask you to repeat and say, I'm expecting, I'm expecting. an unexpected answer. I'm unexpected. Oh, can you shout that out again? I'm expecting, I'm expecting. an unexpected answer. I'm unexpected. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm Hallelujah. I'm expecting. I'm an unexpected answer. Now shout hallelujah, somebody. Shout hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm expecting an unexpected answer. There's a promotion that's got your name on it. I don't care what they say. I, ooh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's a blessing that's got your name on it. That's got... And you have no idea how you're going to get it. No idea how it's coming. But I'm expecting an unexpected answer. How many of us, those that have called on our prayer list, those that have called, and the doctor has said, we've got to do this type of surgery, and we need to perform this, and we've never heard, so we've got to practice on you on this. Oh, but I want you to declare wherever you're hearing this message across the world, across the, hallelujah, across the countries and continents, I want you to declare that I'm expecting an unexpected answer. That child is coming home. Those drugs are going to get out of their system. They are coming out of the prison. They are going to get the job. That husband, yes, yes, yes. He's going to straighten up. That husband is going to become the bishop of the house. He's going to be leading you to the sanctuary. You let him long enough, sister. It's time for him to take his rightful place and say, come on, family. Let's go to the house of the Lord. You, but you got to say, I'm expecting an unexpected blessing. blessing. An unexpected answer. And it's only going to come from the Lord. Come from the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you. If you're here today, you don't know the Lord is your Savior. Here's your, here's your answer. Here's your answer. Here's your answer. 
Your answer is seek the Lord while he may be. You've sought everything else. You've tried everything else. By God, have we tried everything else. We, 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 we've tried the, the soothsayer. We've tried the, 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 the witch. We've tried the, the yes, yes, yes. You know, you, we tried the 800 number. We tried the Scientology. We tried it all. We, we tried it all. But the Lord is saying, now try me. Try me. Try me. I have the answer. I have the answer. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. God bless you, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for this word this morning. We thank you for the unexpected answer, God. We, we, we've already witnessed it in our lives. We've already witnessed it, Lord. And it's stepping stones. It's, it's the testimonial that the children of Israel laid after they came across the Jordan River. It's the 12 stones that we're passing on to our children and to our children's children that they will know the unexpected answer came. Hallelujah. 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 And you brought us across Jordan, Lord. And you're going to bring them into a, a greater promise than we've ever seen. And I thank you this morning. Thank you for those that are back here in the sanctuary. Yeah, God. Thank you how you protected them, Lord. Thank you for Andre, Lord. He went to the doctor and there was nothing broken. Yes, Lord. I thank you for that this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm asking you, God, oh, to do the one to speak a word. In Jesus' name is our prayer. God bless you. Amen and amen. Until next Sunday at the same time, 10 a.m., we say go with God and be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Lord.